Hello everyone and welcome back to For the Minions, the weekly show where we start off talking about some of the, hopefully, what could be the successors to Paragon and then quickly degenerates into just reminiscing about Paragon. But anyway, I am your host, The Man Goose. Joining me, as always, is my lovely co-host, Mandy Mel. What's up, Big Sexy? <laughs> I'm doing good, thank you. I'm excited we have, um, you tickled yourself, didn't you? I did. <laughs> You you got the good giggles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm really excited to reintroduce you guys. You guys recognize those baby blues. We've got Quality Mike back with us. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me back, Mandy and Mangoose. Appreciate it. Of course. Always. And we ships in the night. Uh, Quality Mike and I almost got to hang out here recently. He was he was oh, he was close so to close. the old Mangoose. We uh. <laughs> We almost had, had a couple drinks together. On the oh, same God. island, nonetheless, man. Oh, <laughs> the plans beautiful. that you guys had. It was like drunk lawnmower riding from... Yeah, mm -hmm. it was going to be great. It was going to be great. Oh, well. So, uh, Mike, won't you tell the folks a little bit about yourself? A little bit about your background and such? Yeah, well, uh, I'm basically just uh, like many of you, a Paragon refugee, kind of just waiting for the next <laughs> thing floating around. But uh, basically, i uh, just been grinding it out, trying to find new games to play, doing a little bit of content creation, uh, whether it be predecessor, ethereal, doesn't really matter. But um, just looking forward to the next thing, man, and trying to keep people as excited as I can for it and looking to talk with you guys a little bit about it. Right on. And I do enjoy your videos. I like the uh, I like your idea of doing a um, you were ranking the Paragon heroes by how much you miss them sort of thing. Yeah, we did a Paragon nostalgia tier list. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I started off by saying I can't think of any more of a meaningless video than to do a competitive <laughs> tier list right now. Yeah. And then uh, I just went ahead and went with the nostalgia tier list. Whoever you missed the most went at the top. Whoever I missed the least went at the bottom. I definitely think I ruffled some feathers with that one. Oh, yeah. You're definitely, you can't, you can't do a list yeah. like that no, without pissing several people. You can't people have out. an opinion on the internet. What's wrong with you? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what, was I, what was I thinking? And luckily, I could. I couldn't even post it on Reddit, which thank God because I probably would have got eaten to eaten to shit. So <laughs> oh yeah, but yeah, it was it was cool. Super long video. It took me hours to edit that thing down, but it was wow. fun. A lot of fun. Got to edit it with my buddy Zach, who is now in Australia for the year, and he was a big Paragon guy too. So oh, had to get cool. a video in. With, yeah, I had to get a video in with him before he left, and couldn't think of one better than do to do with him than to just reminisce on some Paragon. Right on, man. So uh, let's let's go ahead and move on, though, to the news and updates. Not a whole lot. Uh, so super huge dry spell. But anyway, we do have some stuff for Omega Studios and Predecessor. Uh, they did some lighting updates, and it looks beautiful. Like, it's so weird to see how much just a change of lighting can affect the game. And I'll have those running up above me right now, so you can take a look at some of the differences between the sort of before and after shots. And those are also on their Discord. You can find that link below if you want to check them out. For yourself, um, did you guys get to take get a chance to look at the uh, lighting stuff, uh, Mike? Yeah, so uh, I didn't get a chance to really dive too deep into it on my like good monitor. I have two monitors, and one of them is like an ancient, like capped at sixty FPS monitor. But uh, it just to me, it looked a lot like uh, it was more uh, cinematic in the lighting update, where it was much more like going to look a lot better on trailers and stuff like that. Um, but I didn't really get to see if the detail was too much different. It definitely looked brighter. I will give them that for sure. But like I said, haven't been able to look at it in, in depth on my good monitor. So when I do, though, I'm sure it'll be crazy <laughs> in depth. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, Mandy, did you get a chance to take a look at that? Yeah, I'm actually checking them out now because I forgot to look at them before the show. Because um, because I'm always always a a number one prepared. Um, but yeah, We're flying by the seat of our pants, basically. Yeah, pretty Let's much. <laughs> But yeah, they are beautiful. Um, it's it's it makes it look almost less cartoony and more realistic and just beautiful. Yeah. It's yeah, just I really agree. really beautiful. They did an amazing job. Hmm. And it's uh it's little details like that that are going to make it feel like Paragon. Um, Absolutely. You know, as, as I said in a couple couple episodes before, I got to play test. Uh, recently playtest Paragon um, uh, predecessor, I should say, and uh, it, it's it's good. It's like really, it's a, it's amazingly a hundred percent better than than their uh, their first alpha alpha outing. 
But um, you really notice the things that made Paragon what it is when they're not there. And you know, it is an alpha state, so they don't have a lot of the animations and stuff in that, that like the death animations aren't there and stuff like that. And you really feel like what made Paragon special. Like you think to yourself, I don't care what state the game is. I just want to play. But then when you right. play it, you realize it does need that stuff. And then mm -hmm. some of the things that Smokey has done with Predecessor, like um, since the alpha, like the camera pans out whenever you go to place like a gadget mine or a uh, Murdoch a static trap. And just that small detail stands out all the more when you see it in the game. And it just it feels so much better when you get that camera panning out a little bit whenever you're targeting and just stuff like that. Um, I'm fully confident that they'll be able to add all that stuff in eventually. I don't know if they'll have it all in by the next time they, they do the, the closed alpha, but yeah. Um, Epic, Epic really, really dicked us over, but God damn, did they make an incredible game, man? Yeah. An incredible looking game for sure. The only reason I mentioned like cinematic is because it really reminded me of all those cinematic trailers that Epic was releasing as far as um, like, when it highlighted like Muriel and just, I mean, all any game, any new hero up release trailer was awesome. Like, yeah, it was incredible. And it just, it reminded me a little bit of that um, for sure. Favorite release trailer, Mandy, go. Release, tra what? <laughs> Char character Favorite release trailer. Release trailer. Oh, character release trailer. Oh gosh. I don't know. You can't hit me on the spot like that. Um, Mandy passes. Mike, yes, go. All right, I got I mean, I got to pick Wukong. Uh, I know yeah. uh, my, Wukong is just my favorite, and I liked the little bit of lore with him having a little bit of beef with Fang Mao. <laughs> um, I actually will say Wraith was pretty sweet, too. Um, yeah. He had a cool one. Because wasn't – did they introduce voice lines in his, too? They did have a few voice they, lines in yeah. his. Yeah, they made yeah. him sort of snarky, sort of uh, – Like Deadpool-esque. Dead, yeah, yeah that's what I was about to, to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was about to and say I Daredevil. Think, I think that was like, oh, shit, like, he's, <laughs> yeah, this might be pretty sweet. You so. know who had a cool one that was a character that I didn't, I didn't enjoy the character, but I enjoyed her uh, release trailer was Zinx. I you liked... are correct, Mandy. Mandy wins. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was, in fact, the best release trailer. Yeah. Because my opinion really... is the one that is correct. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> uh, I had one chance. I blew it. I know, right? <laughs> We were going to bring you on as a third host if you got that right, but uh, <laughs> but wrap it up, wrap it up. But maybe go ahead. What were you going to say about Zinx's trailer? Just it was really cool. It was pretty cinematic with its yeah. uh very seventies vibe, and it was it was a cool one. Yeah, she they did a, a great she job. Was a cool character concept. I liked I liked her cool. Her uh, her concept so maybe, wildly uh, versatile too. Oh my god, you could play that girl anywhere with the maybe yeah. not the jungle, but you could probably make it work though. Let's be real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Once they dumb down the jungle and anybody can do the jungle, yeah, she's perfectly fine in the jungle. Right. Yeah. yeah very cool. Awesome. Uh, let's move on now to Undying Games with Ethereal. Uh, not much news out of them, but they did, um, they did just kind of want to relay some information to you guys, just let you know that a lot of the stuff that they've had planned and going on is all starting to come together. So that puzzle is starting to fit together piece by piece. And that's got to be a great feeling. Um, I used to do that all the time, um, back in my army days is when I, I would, you know, I'd have several plans going that were all at about 90, 95%. And it looked like a clusterfuck from the outside, and I would be get, catching hell from everybody. And then in one day, everything would come together, and they would see exactly what I was doing. And it was just such a great feeling. And I'm I'm hoping that that is what Undying Games and Ethereal is feeling right now. And uh, Mandy, let's let's go to you. What do you got to say about Undying Games and Ethereal? I your little uh, speech there actually just got me hyped for them because yeah <laughs> it feels like we're on the precipice of like them just being like boom there it is like <laughs> you know and so I am excited it it's so funny ethereal is one of those that I I kind of start to forget about them because I just personally me personally I am really looking forward to a game with Paragon Heroes um, I just really really miss that nostalgic 
uh, kind of like we were just talking about uh, with your latest video. I'm going to give you an early plug there, uh, Mike. Um, just the nostalgic feel of those characters. Um, so I, I'll kind of start to forget how hype I am for Ethereal until we start talking about them again. And I'm like, oh, yeah, they got this and they got that. And they got Dr. Grace and she's got a mech and then it looks good. And it's I get excited all over again. I can't I can't help it. So I'm just uh, just going to sit here. I'm going to wait patiently. And I'm going to be excited along with the rest of you guys when when that uh, when that alpha finally drops or some yeah. big piece of news finally finally lands in our laps. And Mike, I know you 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 hopped aboard the Ethereal <laughs> hype train with me pretty early. What mm -hmm. I, what what are your thoughts on Ethereal so far and everything they they've released since the last time we 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 spoke with you? Yeah, so kind of difficult to you know stay up to date with them just because you know they haven't they've been in the in the dark for a little while now, but. We've had some conversations about it, and I think they're just getting ready to really drop a big bomb on us. They've just, I think, been putting their nose to the grindstone and uh, peeling way back on the updates and just going full steam ahead as far as uh, grinding out the game. So like Mandy said, I think we're just waiting on a big bomb, waiting for a big explosion of knowledge, and then uh, we're going to have so much originality going on with a new game that nobody has any idea how it's going to function. Besides maybe the the creators, I don't even think the creators know how that game's <laughs> gonna go until because you find out so many you find out so many bugs and stuff within the first hour of making a game public that it's just gonna be it's gonna go crazy. Yeah, I have a feeling. Hopefully they they do do plenty of internal testing and uh, um, hopefully they learn from predecessors alpha and they put people under an NDA <laughs> so they don't because mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of people got a bad taste in their mouth from predecessors alpha even though we knew it was very incomplete we knew what we were mm -hmm. getting ourselves into but uh but yeah, it was the first taste of like anything real and like tangible so mm -hmm. i think it was it's that it was a little unfair for them Absolutely. to be you know critiqued the way they were yeah. i made a reddit post actually i was so like not irked by the community but i was like hey let's chill on <laughs> what's going on right now got hella upvotes what are you gonna do give me that yeah. karma <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i think we, it, we i don't think we were prepared for 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 what they gave us we were not prepared one bit yeah but uh yeah hopefully ethereum will learn those lessons and uh you know get plenty of testing in before they put it in the public's hands and you know release it to the public eyes and that's kind of what they're doing here um Mm -hmm. They they've got a lot of stuff that they don't want to show people yet because they are they they're not sure if it's actually going to make it into the alpha or make it into the game at all. So that's kind of why they uh they play their cards close to the chest a little bit. They want to make sure that everything is in there and functional before they actually let people take a uh, a look at it. Yeah, yeah I, I think. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, don't worry about I it. Think that <laughs> kind of goes back to what we were talking about last week with setting unrealistic expectations or hyping a community too, hyping the community too much, and then being like, "Ooh, oops, you know, yeah, this was a cool idea, but it's not functional." So I think that's a very smart move, actually, on on their part to um, to make sure things are going to be the best they can be before even going, "Hey, this is something we're toying with," you know, like we might do this or we, you know, it's, yeah. it's just better to kind of know, let, let, let people's expectations be realistic. So. And I think the one thing I, I don't worry so much about with, uh, with ethereal is just because of like being able to interview Jeff and kind of when I was following them a lot more than I am now was like, they're such perfectionists as oh far as God, like, yeah. they will oh, not yeah. let anything get released without like, knowing full well that it's I like that it's going to be functional i mean he told me like they they, they didn't even want to compare it to omeda or anything like that as far as their alpha release or anything like that because they were just like we don't think it's fair to to them or us but at the same time like they were just like we're not going to release anything until we know we've fully internally tested it to the best of our abilities and you know we don't want i don't think they wanted what happened with predecessor to happen with them of course but i mean like i don't want to throw predecessor under the bus by any means because i'm yeah, not but, no. we know but they're mean. they're crazy perfectionists over yeah. there man speaking of ethereal and omeda i don't know if you in, in the last four the minions um owen was calling calling smoky out saying hey let's have a 5v5 your uh your paragon heroes against our uh <laughs> our ethereal heroes um if you guys haven't 
noticed the bromance there. Uh, <laughs> Owen from Undying Games and Sergeant Smokey from Omega Studios get along incredibly well. And uh, that's that's good to see um, these companies, you know, feeding off each other. And, of course, those two really aren't in direct competition uh, the way kind of Omega and Meta Buff is. But um, still cool to see still cool to see that that communication there and that uh, that goodwill. And there's a lot of admiration. Like they, they totally dig each other's project and they're like, Oh, you know, like good on, good on you. Yeah. Smokey's a super good, I can't speak for Owen. I haven't spoken with Owen as much as I've spoken with Sergeant Smokey. Smokey, I was shocked. He pops into my stream from when I used to have <laughs> I stream from time to time. He hit me with a, subs- a subscription the other day. I was like, dude, you don't even know me. And <laughs> I barely know you. Like, I'm supposed to be the one to subscribe to you. Like, why are you subbing to me, man? I'm a nobody. But I was, Aww. he's just a, it's a good dude. Talks to me about Paragon. And I will say too, like, if anybody's looking for a company that is going, or I shouldn't say it's a company because it's not a company, it's a studio. But uh, a studio that's going to update you and like not keep you in the dark, like Omeda is the one that will, without a doubt, like update you daily. They do the daily streams. And I actually gave Smokey and the team some crap, like without fully knowing that they really do like update people like crazy as far as live mm-hmm. streaming uh, updates, just because I don't have time to sit at streams all day and, you know, watch them do what they do. Mm-hmm. So I, pref- I prefer to see like read the updates on Discord. But Man, that those guys update and do all kinds of cool stuff on the daily. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Smokey is a great dude, however, I will not hesitate to steal his wife. <laughs> <laughs> and I ho- I'm hoping he's watching as I say that. <laughs> Let's uh uh moving on. Metabuff, we didn't have anything for Metabuff and Core this week. Um we also didn't have any updates from Visionary or, with uh Phoenix Rising. However, we did learn that Mandy lives somewhat close to one of their developers, so she's gonna start going over at night, digging through his trash and seeing what she can find out for us. That's and, right. Uh, I'm on, the the, I'm on the job, guys. You can yep. count on me. We'll let, we'll let you know on the channel any credit card numbers, social security numbers, yes. anything <laughs> like that she finds. We'll put it up here for you. <laughs> Black or blackmail him. Force them to release the game. Right. Force them to release. That's right. <laughs> Where's the info now, motherfucker? Right. <laughs> so I think that wraps it up for the news and updates. So let's head into the poll results. And uh, we're doing the... Uh, the uh, most impactful ultimate competition still. And the brackets have come down to, or um, not Aurora, to Muriel and Kwong. Muriel won with a commanding lead. Uh, she was, I think, 72%. Kwong was at 27, something like that. Where'd I write that down at? I don't think, I don't think those numbers add up. 73 and 27. <laughs> 73 and 27. <laughs> They probably still don't add up. <laughs> they, they do, but but uh, yeah, I, I, there's no no surprise there. Um, I think Kwong, it, the, their ultimates were impactful in different ways, but I in think in the long run, Muriel uh, reversal of fortune was a little more um, impactful than Kwong. Um, yeah, it can really go. I, I knew Muriel was going to win, but I think it could really, really could have gone both ways if you really think mm-hmm. about how. I mean, Mike, you were talking about Kwong's ultimate earlier. Yeah, I just think it's it's versatile from the standpoint of it's it's global to where if you have your ultimate up, you can basically be anywhere as long as you get your tether to where it needs to be. Um, if you didn't quite finish the core, you could always plan it there, get out of there, and then teleport into it. Except if you're already there, why not just ult on it right away? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. Um However, yeah, Muriel has the uh, the global team ultimate, much like Athena and Smite for those that have hopped on the Smite train. But uh, and actually, the thing about like I'm gonna throw Smite in the game in this for whatever reason, but like Muriel's even more impactful than that. If for those that don't know, like Athena has a global alt just like Muriel, where she can teleport to any uh, hero on her team uh, and provide like shields and armor bonus and stuff like that. But like Muriel's was team wide like as long as you were in her aoe it was gonna you know help you but athena's was just what it, it's an individual mm. ult, so but quang just has that smooth like butter feel man <laughs> i can't get past it you like the quang yeah. huh oh yeah so smooth 
<laughs> this was a tough one. I I actually kind of hesitated a little bit on who I was going to vote for. I like my immediate response was Muriel, but then I was like, but Quang, man, like he's he's useful. It was impactful in a different way. Um, I did ultimately vote for uh, Muriel, but yeah, this was one that was like I feel like if they would have been up against different characters, uh, different, you know, if he would have been up against a different hero, it could have gone, could have gone uh, his way. Yeah. Well, he did make it all the way to the finals, right? So. This is true. Well, this is very this true. Is the, uh, this is the quarterfinals. Oh, my, oh, jeez. The semifinal. <laughs> the, the semifinals will be pitting Muriel against Aurora, but first we got to well, find he's, out. He's made it this far. I don't even understand how brackets work, so I'm just. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, how did you set them up? I mean, I went to just a random. I went to a sports ball website and just put their names in as teams. Gotcha. <laughs> I like it. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for the poll results. So that's going to bring us to the highlight reel. And uh, after we after we take a look at the highlights, I'm going to do like a small informative video showing you guys how you can upload from your PS4 to Google Docs. And then you can send that link straight to me. A lot of people have been asking, you know, hey, I've got all these great plays on my on, on my PlayStation or my computer, and I have no idea how to send them to you. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that in case you want to you want to do that. And then I can put them on the show, and you can be happy, and I can be happy, and everybody can be happy. But for now, let's move on to the highlight reel. True Pain on Sevrog is going to show us how to counter Greystone here as he bricks him into the fountain. Always hilarious. We're going to take another look at that. We got Face pulls him back for zero reason, but he does get around him, biffs him right into the wall. Greystone resurrects to his own death. We got Handsome Lord on Shimby showing zero respect to Decker as she tees off on Sparrow. Sparrow's trying to get away. Decker's missing some shit. The slow bubble pops, but Shimby is able to finish that kill. But here comes Chimera to show her the error of her ways, chasing her down. Of course, Ambush is off cooldown again. It's always off cooldown, but here's Narbash and Grux to save little Shimby's life. She owes them a beer. And a lot of stuff going on in the mid lane, but Shimby's going to sneak off to the side and take out that Decker that she missed earlier. Chimera is running for his life now very low. The first line beat misses. The second line beat connects. Shimby picks up yet another kill. Gadget is trying to escape, but Shimby's got her ass. She rushing beats into her. Hits her with, oh, hits her with a cheeky ultimate. Kind of unnecessary, but that's a quadra kill for Shimby. A. Linden on Horagash spots the red team trying to take Orb Prime. Gets a quick, easy kill on Rampage. Grox is probably going to go down too. He does, but here's Greystone to save the day. She just aggressively swarms right through him. She's trying to get that gadget. She does take the gadget, and she gets a steal on the Orb Prime. Talk about adding insult to injury. I don't like Horagash, but I recognize a good play when I see one. All right, guys, if you want to share a clip with me, it's pretty easy. Just go to Google, type in Google Docs. The website will pop up here. Just click on that one. It's completely free. Then you just go to Google Docs right there. And then if you look here at the bottom, you go all the way to the right. You click on this little folder, opens that up, and then you click on Upload. And then you can just drag and drop in here if you want to, or you can just search for a file. I uh, don't want to do anything as long as a For the Minions. Um, I'll probably just grab a highlight here from another folder. Here we go. So I'll just... Open that up, and it's going to go ahead and upload. And you just let it go for a while. And like I said, this is completely free. Um, as long as you can access the internet from your PlayStation, you should be able to do this. Or your computer. So now it's uploading, so we need to go up here to the top. On these three little dots, go ahead and click on that, and go to Share. And now you click on Get Shareable Link. And you can copy that link and send it over to me however you want to do it on the co in the comments or... Uh, or on Discord, and then I can view your highlights. So that's how you do it, folks. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed those highlights. And if you do want to send me some highlights, uh, best way to do it is via my Discord. You can just post them in the general chat or DM them straight to me. Uh, you can also just post them in the comments if you got the link. I, I really don't care. Send them however you want to send them. But for now, it is time for the topic for discussion. And that topic is... Is it a good idea to remake a failed game? I think this topic is going to take us to a lot of places because there's a lot to talk about here. So, um, uh, Mike, you got you got some opinions here. I know you do. You, you're you're an opinionated fella. 
I like being an opinionated guy. I like causing <laughs> discussion. I like causing some havoc in the in the community. But uh, I'll keep it short, and then we can deliberate, I guess. But like, uh, I think so. It's super easy to say yes and no. Uh, but I'll go polarizing. So I'll say uh, I'll say no for the sake of discussion, just because I think to a certain extent, like you know what you had. Okay, granted, you didn't have it maybe to the fullest extent it could have been but you knew what you had as far as like a game where the majority player base was ps4 um and then there just wasn't a lot of like other outlets as far as mobas on ps4 now there's you know genesis just came out so there's that but there still really isn't but anyway um you, you, you knew what you had and then maybe if you gave it some more you know, attention, some more TLC. Uh, it could have been something more, but I think you knew what you had and then it kind of blew up in your face and then you you dumped it for the first shiny thing you could get your hands on. <laughs> so you're, so you say, you say no. They should I'm only, I'm only saying no, just to give like one side just, just for to be, now. The, just to be the devil's advocate. advocate here. Right. It's, it's so easy to just say, you know, yes and no, because you know, yeah. you could, but you can't. Yeah, I just want to play devil's advocate a little bit. All right, Mandy, you got anything to add? Okay. Um, I My feelings were that middle of the road, like yes and no, here's why it's good, here's why it's bad type of thing. Um, it's. I think it's so tricky, honestly, because basically, like uh, Mike was saying, like, yeah, we kind of sit here now and say, even just the other day, my husband said, I miss Paragon so much. I would play V42 right now. I would play V42 just to play Paragon. So we're kind of at this point where we're like, I'll take anything. I'll take anything. But then once it gets here, like say we get one of these games and we are just like blown away at first. We're so excited. But then you start to nitpick. You start to go, well, I wish it would do this. I wish it had that. I wish I could do this. Mm -hmm. I wish it didn't do that. And then maybe it goes the way of Paragon. Maybe these studios decide they can't please this community um, the way that Epic kind of that's that was what they claimed is that, oh, we don't we don't know how to give you what you want type of thing. Um, and I feel like that is a very real um, a very real thing. You're, you want to please your community, but at the same time, you need to be a successful business. You need to be, um, a successful game. So, um, I, I still haven't said yes or no yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to say yes, just to kind of play the other side of, of what Mike had to say. I'll go ahead and take that yes camp. Um, because I feel like there's so many of us who want it. And maybe going through what we went through with Paragon will be a little more sympathetic of changes that need to be made, perhaps, or it not being perfect and shiny um, right off the get-go. So I'm going to say yes. I think it's a good idea to try and pick up that torch and give us what we had and maybe refine it a little bit better and, um, and just make a lot of people happy again. Hopefully. All right. So we got a no and a yes. So I got. I guess I got to be the wishy washy motherfucker and. <laughs> Deliberate, yes, Father Mangoose. <laughs> no, I think. I think no. It's not a good idea to remake a failed game. But I don't think Paragon was a the story of a failed game. I think it was the story of a company that failed a game. So I don't think Paragon was the culprit. I think Epic was the culprit here. So. 100%. Is it a good idea for Epic to remake Paragon? Fuck no, because they will just fuck it all up over again. Um, Meta Buff and Omega, though, they have a unique opportunity to, to to learn from the mistakes that Epic made and and try to improve upon them. So in that sense, I think, yes, it is. Um, even though Paragon was a failed game, it was more the failure of the company itself and not the game itself. So. I think it is a good idea to try and remake Paragon. There's so many of us that miss it so very much. Um, yeah, I see it. I see the comments every day. Like, I really miss Paragon. I so miss Paragon. Is like, 
Yeah, you're you're not alone. You might think you're a fucking weirdo for for still pining over a game that was canceled so long ago, but uh, you are in good company here because uh, that's all we do is talk about a a, a, a dead game and um, that's been dead for a long time. So don't feel bad if you still feel feel a pang of regret for Paragon because there's plenty of us out there that still do. But um. Yeah. yeah, I would say the other th- reason I would say no is because, like, it's been a while, right? It's been o- over a year now since we've had a game, right? Mm-hmm. Like a Paragon game. And how many people have gone to do other things fill that time uh, to, like, you know, and that have gotten invested in other areas, whether it be video games or not video games, right? Mm-hmm. And now, you know, are they just going to flood back now that they have a chance to play? Maybe. But I would say probably not everybody's going to come back. I think that's a pretty safe assessment to make. And then, like, uh, we just mentioned a competitive player who is now playing another video game at the competitive level for a a team, like an organized team. And it's like, well, is that person play this? This game that that doesn't have any, like, you know, established esports for its setting or it's really even an established game yet so i would still much rather prefer that the game i would much rather they do that instead of just saying fuck it uh but i think i i just think it's it's not a good idea but it can be if given the proper love and attention that it Mm -hmm. deserves well said thank you (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah um some things i think they could do better is definitely advertise the game a little more than oh yeah than than epic did um i was talking about this a little bit um they uh, they of course wanted paragon to be a successful game but they also kind of just wanted it to be a um a showcase of the unreal engine and its capabilities that's why there was so many there was a lot of there was a lot of shit that went in the paragon that we that you don't know about until you do some research into it they did some just stuff that the had never been done in any game before and that's why it felt so smooth and immersive and that's why uh, meta buff and omega are having such a hard time even though they have the assets they have the animation assets they don't have the expertise and the technical knowledge that went into making those aspect those assets work so smoothly. What well, was that me? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's me. There's it's thunderstorming outside. I'm so sorry. Oh, I can't control. I can't control the weather, guys. I'm Jesus sorry. Jesus Christ! Channel your storm hey, powers. Get it together. This is your fault, Mangoose, for living in North Carolina and causing hurricanes over there. <laughs> All the damn time. Oh, I we, thought, got to, we got to deal with that stuff a couple of days later. <laughs> I was for I was like, God, I got to edit out another one of Mandy's farts. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I saw your face, and you were like, what? "Oh my god, is that God!" Yeah. <laughs> Sounded like somebody was blowing into their mic. <laughs> I thought it my did. I thought my dad was walking was like, in. How about a little professionalism, assholes? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna be disappointed if your dad doesn't. Walk I think he just an, oh, there's my mom instead. Yes! Actually, hey, so there you go. hey. hey. Yeah. you're gonna be on. All your friends? No, this is well, yes, but <laughs> you're no, he doesn't know. <laughs> my thousands of friends that are all in this community of a video game are gonna see this. So you're oh. gonna be on YouTube. Nobody's so waiting. don't embarrass me too bad. We got oh, to. I was I was just coming in to say hi. Well, hello, mom. <laughs> now we've got to meet uh, Mike's whole family. Wait, wait. Do you got brothers and sisters? You, you, yeah. Do you have? Do you have cousins? Yeah, I do. You have... <laughs> I have all that. I have all that stuff. Guys. We're going to have to keep bringing you back until too. we get get them in here. Until we get them I all know. in. I know. My brother's the one who introduced me to Bangus, actually. Oh really? Aww. Yep, it all comes full circle. Well, it hasn't quite so, yet because you haven't met him, but that's eventually. who you have to blame. Well, tell mm-hmm. him thank you. Oh, that's who you have to blame, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> the funny we just got way was, off topic, didn't we? I think we were kind of done anyway, huh? Just a tad. She, she was not coming in just to say hi. She had something to. She had something to tell me. I know it. I'm gonna get wrung <laughs> out after this. Oh, oh, somebody's in trouble. <laughs> Do you guys have anything more you wanted to add to the topic, or 
think I'm good. I got nothing for you. All right, let's uh, let's move on to plugs then. Um, Quality Mike, what do you got to plug, man? Um, well, you did it earlier, but I guess I would just plug my uh, Paragon Nostalgia tier list. If you have 27 minutes that you don't need to uh, use on anything else, go ahead and watch that. If you want to get tilted because I don't agree with your favorite hero and I hate Sarah <laughs> and I hate uh, who else, Tara, um, then you'll definitely enjoy watching that and calling me an asshole in the comments. Um, but yeah, if you want to check me out on Twitch, I do that occasionally. I've been playing a lot more Smite recently, so if PUBG is not your thing, maybe Smite is. Or if you have never played either, give it a shot. But uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. Always fun to have you, dude. Mandy, got anything to plug? Um, I mean, I'm still twitching uh, occasionally. I've been a little sick um, lately. I'm like, yeah, I like, like twitch every once in a while on camera. Come watch it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's been a little slower, but I'm still out there. You can still find me somewhere if you look hard enough. Right on. Um, I guess I'll plug my Instagram that I've been updating a lot lately. Um, for those of you who have been following it, the, the jar was full of pig hearts. Those were pig hearts. Uh, at least that's what the label said. Um, <laughs> is that but, what they tasted like? <laughs> that's what they tasted like. <laughs> <laughs> Funny comment today. I posted. Um, I found a movie called Gang Bang Fluffers, <laughs> and I, I posted that the VHS and uh, said it was probably the worst job ever. And somebody responded, "At least, at least it's not making videos about a dead game," <laughs> <laughs> which cracked me up beyond burn. belief. Such a good burn. So well played. It was. It was very I well I salute played. you. I salute you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, before we wrap it up, I got a question for you two. I'm going to put you on the spot once again. If there was another type of environment that you'd like to play Paragon in, be that like, I don't know, a desert or like an urban environment or something like that, what would you choose? Hmm. For me, I think, uh, I think like more of a sci-fi sort of urban environment could be cool because that's not really been done in MOBAs. I know Genesis kind of does it, but I think like instead of trees and stuff, like big heaps of garbage and crap like that, I think, I think would be really cool. Um, I mean that it's a possibility with these games. They could, they could design some new maps and some new areas. So I think that would be kind of neat. What do you guys think? I don't know why, but my head automatically went to Red Dead Redemption. So I was thinking of like an like old, old West. Yeah, like oh, an oh, old West cool. MOBA. So that would be kind of cool. And Give like, them all I Old mean, West skins? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's where my head's at. <laughs> well, I better not see Nintendo do this after I make this uh, this claim. But I think a MOBA that had the... Peach's Castle on one side and Bowser's Castle on the other side. <laughs> a, Mari a, a Nintendo Mario MOBA would be so sick. I'm well, surprised they haven't done that. So Isn't that so simple? Like all the ca all the characters are there. They're all there. their all their powers and abilities are there. You just got to kind of make a, a few up as far as like CC and all that shit and whatever. But it's so easy. Go so trademark easy that shit. Go patent Dude, that you shit. You better. You got to go right now and trademark that. <laughs> I don't think I can. Can I trademark a Nintendo <laughs> brand? Sure. You can do anything that you set your mind to. Yeah, reach for the stars, man. <laughs> I suppose. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> you can do anything you set your mind to. I think they'll tell me to go F myself and kick me, <laughs> kick me in the dick and watch me scream. You never, you never know until you try. <laughs> You always miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. <laughs> well, did, did you see? Did you see Soldier Boy make the Soldier game? Did you see what happened with that? That's just gonna happen to me. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> oh fuck! I love you guys. <laughs> All right, that's gonna wrap it up for for the meetings this week. If you have a new environment that you'd like to see Paragon set in, let me know down in the comments below. But for now, this is the for the minions crew signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangoose! Ready. <laughs> oh, hold on, let me stretch. Let me stretch. Game time. <laughs> all right. You all right there, big sexy? Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm good, little sexy. <laughs>
I should. That's damn it. Redo. Let's let's redo the. Uh, nope. Nope. You missed Yo, your chance. I'm, bi- I'm big sexy, and you're a little sexy. Play it back one time. <laughs>